Hello everyone and welcome back to the series on how to build your own buggy, off-road buggy. Uh, today's episode, episode number four, is on angles and trigonometry. Uh, so we need to talk about these before, again, we start doing some notching. And I do promise you that uh, in the next episode, episode five, I'm going to actually do some notching in front of you. Uh, and I'll show you how to do uh, nodes, so how to connect tubes together, uh, what's the proper placement for connecting tubes together. But for today, uh, I need to show you some of the uh, the tools uh, that I use for measuring angles. I mean, uh, in episode uh, one or two, uh, I talked to you about uh, what tools are required to build your own buggy. Uh, however, uh, there are some smaller tools that I didn't talk about, uh, especially for finding angles. So um, I'm going to show you what I use. Uh, so obviously, you need to have a good measuring tape. Uh, and the one that I have is uh, is in inches, and it's it's got also the uh, one eighth, one quarter, uh, etc. Which is uh, uh, it's sometimes nice. It's not needed, obviously, but uh, it's nice to have. And I have two or three of them lying around uh, the shop. I also use really nice sharpies. The sharpies are good for um, for uh, writing on the tube uh, itself. Uh, so what else do I do I have? Obviously, you need to have a really nice and long level. This is a four uh, four feet level, and I also have a smaller level. So the smaller level can come in handy in some places where the other one doesn't fit. Okay, so for finding angles, um, there's a tool. Uh, it's called an angle finder, like this one here. And it's really uh, the really nice thing about it is uh, it's digital. And uh, you open it up and it will give you the actual angle right away. So this is really cool, uh, but you can't, you can't place it everywhere that, you, you know, that you're building. So I'm going to have to show you other tricks for finding angles in places where you can't use this guy here. And uh, something else that I have, it's a small digital angle finder. So this one is just you turn it on and as you tilt it, Either way, it will change angle for you. It's really nice. It's very precise and it's very small. So this fits everywhere. It's got a magnetic base on it. And uh, what I also have is a, uh, a smaller kind of version of the angle finder. This is more an, of an analog angle, angle finder. And you can see here, it kind of gives you the approximate angle, uh, obviously from here. And this, uh, this one is pretty cheap. It's made out of plastic, but it works really good too. I also have a, uh, a plumb bob, okay, so the plumb bob you just hang and uh, it will give you a, a, a straight vertical line. As well as I have uh, a tube here, this is the uh, 1.66 tube that I use for my buggy and it's cut off and it's deburred and I have a hose clamp over it. Why do I have a hose clamp? Because I can take the hose clamp off. And if I mark a tube, then I can just run my Sharpie all around and I know that this is fairly straight. And finally, uh, what I wanted to show you is uh, something, it's a, it's a nice little tool, it's called the Pipe Master. Uh, I don't use it all the time, but I use it sometimes. And the really neat thing about it is, uh, basically it's like, it's like a whole set of needles. And... So it's made especially for the size of tube uh, that I'm using. And what's really neat about it is if you get any of your tubes, right, you just slide it in. There you go. It slides just right in. And basically you can connect to another tube. So this is another tube right here. And basically what you do is you can just get it across, push on the needles, and it will give you kind of a rough idea of how do you how are you gonna notch? So this is doesn't this doesn't involve any math. Obviously, you push the needles fairly straight. I can't do it here with my two hands standing up like that. But here you go. You kind of get an idea. So there you go. So this is what the pipe master does. Uh, it's useful. It's useful sometimes. Uh, I don't use it all the time. Uh, I'm going to show you now a few tricks on trigonometry. Uh, so basically. Uh, how to uh, use math to your advantage. Uh, if I look at my buggy, I see a whole bunch of right angle triangles and there's a whole bunch of angles everywhere too. So uh, I try to use uh, some math, 
basic math in order to make some calculations. And I wanted to let you know also that a big part of building a buggy is the planning beforehand. So before I have, like if I think about a project that I have, okay, so today I'm going to work on the base of the buggy or the, uh, the, the subframe of the buggy. What do I do is during the day, I think about it uh, like a day before I kind of come up with a plan. I have a little notebook where I write notes on it and, and I make drawings uh, about different things and I make measurements. So I plan it ahead uh, in my mind. And then when I come to the shop, I just pretty much just execute. Uh, so this saves a lot of time. And to me, honestly, I find that it's much uh, planning takes a lot more time than executing. Uh, most of the time. So as long as you have a really solid plan for this particular piece of the buggy, you'll be okay. So next, I'll talk to you about trigonometry. Uh, if you're not interested, you can skip through it, but I think it's important to know. Uh, so it's up to you if you want to listen or not. Uh, if not, just uh, hang tight. Next episode is going to be on notching tube, and I'll actually show you how it's done using my tube notcher. Trigonometry is the branch of mathematics that deals with angles and right angle triangles in order to try to find a relationship between the various components of a triangle. And this will obviously help us a lot when we're building our own chassis. Uh, this is some simple math that I would like to explain to you to help you out in order to uh, make some basic calculations. So if we take a right angle triangle, like the one that I have here, it's going to have three sides and it's going to have three angles associated with it. So a right angle triangle means that one of the angles is actually 90 degrees. So if I'm going to call the first angle is A1, the second angle is A2, and then the third angle is A3, and then for the sides, for the length of each side of the triangle, I'm going to call S1, the longest side, is called also the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. And I'm going to have also S2 as well as S3, the two other sides, smaller sides. So there are some basic rules that we can follow in, in order to help us uh, relate these angles and the sides. And this is going to be very helpful for us. So the first law is called the Pythagorean law. And it basically uh, makes a relationship between the length of each side of a right angle triangle. So for instance, S is the hypotenuse, so I, if I take the square of the hypotenuse, it must be equal to the sum of the squares of the two uh, other uh, length uh, sides of the right angle triangle. So in this case, I'm going to have S1 squared is equal to S2 squared plus S3 squared, okay? The other uh, interesting relationship is every time you have a triangle, it doesn't matter if it's a right angle triangle or just a regular triangle of any sort, uh, we are going to have that the summation of the three uh, angle must be three angles must be equal to 180 degrees. And in the case of a right angle triangle, uh, we are going to have that one of the angles, which is A3, is actually equal to 90 degrees. Based on this relationship, we can see that A1 plus A2 are equal to 90 degrees. So it means that this angle plus this angle is equal to, uh, 100, uh, equal to 90 degrees, which will help us a lot in some of the math calculations. Now, these relationships here are not that critical to know, but they're always nice to know. So I recommend that you, you learn how to use them on, on any calculator. Even this, your smartphone is going to be it's going to have the capability of making these uh, calculations. So I'm going to show them to you. you. You can use them or you, you don't have to, but they definitely come in handy when you're building your own chassis. So the first one here, this is, this is called a cosine. Okay, it's cosine of any angle theta, okay, of any angle is always equal to the adjacent side of the length of the adjacent side in front of that angle divided by the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle. So if I give you an example of this, okay, so if I do the cosine of A1 is going to be equal to the adjacent side, which is this one, because the other adjacent side is actually the hypotenuse. So it's going to be the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. If I do the cosine of A2, it's going to be S2 divided by S1, which is hypotenuse. 
And if I do the sine of any angle, it's equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So if I do the op uh, what is the sine of A1, it's going to be S2 divided by S1. And the sine of A2 is equal to S3 divided by S1. And finally, the tangent or the tan of any angle is equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent. So the tan of A1 is S2 divided by S3. And you can see here these examples uh, that I've given you here. There are also some interesting properties of angles that can definitely help us out. For example, this is uh, one of those uh, um, rules for angles. So if I have two straight lines and I have another line running at an angle from the first one to the second line, if this angle is A1, that means if these lines are parallel to each other, I must have that A1 must be equal to A2. So as long as these are parallel to each other, these two angles are the same. And also, it's interesting to know, if this is, this is A1 here, and I say, uh, for example, A1 is equal to 40 degrees here, that means if I take another angle, this one here, and I call it A3, so A3, A3 is going to be equal 180 degrees minus 40 degrees. So it's going to be equal to 140 degrees, okay? So why 180 degrees? Because a straight line is, is going to take, ma make an angle of 180 degrees, okay? So if I know this is 40 and this is 140 degrees, okay? Obviously, if this is 40 as well, uh, this angle here is going to also be 140 degrees. So this is also very helpful for when we're going to be uh, notching to. So why is trigonometry important for us? So let's make an example, and I'll show you exactly why it is needed. Okay, so assume these are here the three relationships that we have for the angles. Uh, cosine of an angle is equal to adjacent over the hypotenuse. Sine of the angle is equal to opposite divided by the hypotenuse. And then the tan of an angle is equal to opposite divided by the adjacent. So now let's make a top view drawing of our uh, chassis. This is the front axle. This is the back axle. These are the links. These are the back links, the lower links. And this is the, uh, the main part of the frame. So I would like to know what is the distance z that I need in order to obtain 118 inch wheelbase. Remember that I told you in the last video that for me, I found the perfect link length is to be approximately 40 inches. Obviously yours can vary a little bit from that, but if we assume that both the front and the back lower links are four inches long, let's try to find using math and trigonometry, what is uh, z, which is the distance that I need to make my skid plate or the distance between the lower frame mounts uh, for the front and rear control arms. So if now I assume also that the angle between my front links, so the lower triangulation angle for my links for the front suspension is 44 inches, or uh, what I can do is I can just uh, obtain or measure the angle from a straight line from back to the front here. And obviously if you, if you don't have an angle finder or you can't measure this angle, there's a way of finding it, finding it by using the Pythagorean law. As you can see here, we have a right angle triangle. So if I don't know this angle here, I can't measure it, I can, I can find what is uh, the distance from here to here. So this is what I'm looking for, which is x. I can find it by doing, so the square of this side plus the square of this side must be equal to the square of 40 inches. So I can use that. Or if you have the angle 22, you can use trigonometry in order to find what is the distance x. Now, if my rear links, there's an angle separation between them of 50 degrees, as you can see now, I have two right angle triangles here. Then the angle that I have here is half of 50 degrees, which is 25 degrees. So looking at this here, what can you use? Which one of these equations you can use in order to obtain x? So to me, I have the hypotenuse and I have the angle. What I'm looking for is the adjacent part of the angle. So I don't really care about this side. So I look here and I see adjacent and hypotenuse. These are the two that I'm dealing with. I don't care about this equation and I don't care about this equation. So I pick this equation, which is the cosine of an angle of the angle, which is 22. 
is equal to the adjacent, this is what I'm looking for, and the hypotenuse, which is equal to 40 inches. So what I can do is I, I can manipulate this equation by taking the hypotenuse and multiplying it by the cosine of the angle. So in this case, I have hypotenuse multiplied by the cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent. So meaning that what I can do is x is equal to 40 inches multiplied by cosine of 22. That means my distance from here to here, x, is equal to 37. And I can do exactly the same thing now for the back end. Now my angle is, is 25 degrees because it's half of 50. So 40 inches multiplied by cosine of 25. And this is going to give me 36.25 uh, inches. Okay, But what I'm trying to find is the distance set. So I have x, I have y, and I know that the distance from here to here is 118 inches. So basically I can subtract 118 inches minus x minus y, which I just found, and I attain 44 and 3 quarter of an inch. So that means my the distance between the, the link, uh, the links, the lower link mounts on the frame must be 44 uh, and 3 quarter of an inch in order to obtain a 118 inch wheelbase. So I know this is this might seem like a lot of math, but obviously if you want to build your own chassis, you need to learn some of the ma basics of math in order to, to help you out because Obviously, yes, you can take an angle finder and, and, and measure some angles. However, there's many instances building a buggy where you can actually take the angle finder and put it in a place where you can measure the angle. So in that case, you have to measure length or distances. It's much easier with a measuring tape. And then you can do some calculations on the side in order to obtain the angles that you want. All right. So uh, that's it then for uh, this episode. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, we, I will see you next time in a couple of days. Uh, I'll make the other episode on uh, notching tube uh, using the tube notcher, and I'll show you a few different angles, notching tube at different angles, as well as connecting notes uh, together. I'll see you next time.